You're listening to the Clear Creek Resources Podcast from Clear Creek Community Church. To hear more, check out clearcreekresources.org. All right. Well, hey, guys, thank you for joining us today in the podcast. I have Carl Garcia here and Chad Clarkson. Uh, I want to spend a little bit of time today talking about uh, church planting and global missions. You know, this is something that when people attend our services, they often hear a lot about sure. that we're doing things globally and church planting. And I think for some people, it, that can kind of seem like, well, what does that actually mean? And so you guys have roles here at the church and in other areas that give uh, direction, leadership, and oversight to some of those things. So just wanted to spend some time talking about that. I know in, in our context here locally, we talk about the Beltway to Beach, mm-hmm. Bay to Brazoria, County, where we have campuses to, to, to reach people. But then once we get beyond that into uh, some other areas, greater Houston, I know, Chad, you give some oversight and direction to that. Can you yep. talk a little bit about uh, your role in that, how long you've been doing that, and maybe a little bit about what that looks like? Yeah, sure. Well, I started, man, it's been not quite 20 years ago, but getting close <laughs> to 20 years, it's hard to believe here at Clear Creek. So initially started as the uh, pastor of church planting and missions. Uh, so initially, let me kind of back up a little bit. Really, when we when we kind of started kind of developing that Go vision, we really built it off of Acts 1-8. So okay. you've got Jesus there uh, with his disciples getting ready to ascend into heaven. It's kind of another version of the commit Great Commission where he says, I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Mm-hmm. So that's been kind of our philosophy at Clear Creek. What is it? What does our Jerusalem look like? Which we call our four B area, which you just referenced. What's our ends of the earth look like? And we've said we want to do missions that results in church planting. So we'll get into that. But looking for uh, really strategic locations around the globe where we can really see church multiplication happen. And then Judea, Samaria, really became Houston. You know, how do we get after Greater Houston? You know, at that time. We were probably creeping up on 6 million people. Now it's over 7 million people. We looked at it being our Judea, the next kind of concentric circle. Mm-hmm. Like if you were to drop a rock in a, pa- in a pond, you, you kind of got that yeah. ripple effect. Uh, so you got the Judea, but then Samaria, because it's culturally different as well. So you look at Houston, it's considered the most diverse city in the United States, 350 people groups, 220 languages. So really HCPN really kind of emerged out of Clear Creek with kind of how do we, how do we impact Houston with the gospel? Uh, and just yeah, real quick, so H- HCPN. Yeah. Stands for Houston Church Planting Network. Perfect. So we did a first gathering back in, I think it was December 2009. And we didn't have like, all right, here's the strategic plan of HCPN. It wasn't anything like that. But at that first meeting, we grabbed some other churches, pastors together, and we said, hey, here's what we want this to be about. We want to be about Houston. And again, referenced how big it is, how fast it was growing, the diversity. We said, we want to be about church planting. Realize, hey, we, we want to see... Uh, new churches start really all over greater Houston. Uh, And church planning as a strategy to get to seeing the city reached, really every man, woman, child impacted with the gospel. And then we said we wanted to function like a network where, hey, it wasn't just one church or one denomination, but in order to you know, see that kind of impact, we had to have multiple groups at the table working together. So we said at that first gathering, Houston Church Planning Network, and that's kind of what stuck for our name, probably because of lack of creativity a little bit, but uh, <laughs> that's what stuck uh, with HCP. And how many churches are a part of that today? Yeah, now, so we started with a handful. Really, Clear Creek was, you know, starting point number one, and now we've got almost 130 churches that's amazing. Across, across Greater Houston that are collaborating uh, together. So it's been it's been an exciting journey the last decade plus. Give, give me a little bit of idea, paint a picture of what, what, what practically does it look like uh, to be a part of HCPN? What are they doing? How are they resourcing people? I mean, what what's the advantage of having an organization like that mm-hmm. and being a part of that? Yeah, so one, one of the things Bruce, is, I think, has drilled uh, into HCPN and, and Clear Creek as a whole, you know, talk about there's good nonprofits and bad nonprofits. Uh, the bad nonprofits try to do the work of the local church, and good nonprofits try to help the church do the work of the church. And that's really our posture with HCPN. How do we help churches plant churches? So that's kind yeah. of our philosophy. So we'll come alongside uh, both existing churches and new churches and really say, hey, how can we help you? Whether that's training leaders, helping you develop a culture for church planting. You know, maybe you don't have all the resources at your church to develop a full-blown residency. We offer those with HCPN. So it's just a way to kind of uh, really get in the game with church planning without having the complete burden on just you as a local church or individual. 
Yeah. And as a result of some of the efforts over the years, I think, you know, talk a little bit about how some uh, some other cities have kind of taken notice and reached yeah. out. What, what does that look like for yeah, you guys? Yeah, that's been, that's been a real fun thing uh, lately. And it started kind of a little bit kind of before the COVID season where we, we were getting more like emails or calls and saying, hey, I've, I've heard about HCPN. Can you tell me about it? And really that list now has expanded. I think I've got an Excel file, you know, 30, 35 different cities that I've had like coaching conversations with, um, and it kind of culminated or kind of really took a next step back in September. Uh, we hosted our first city networks gathering. So it's citynetworks.org, and we had 30 cities, or excuse me, 13 cities uh, from around the United States and around the world that participated in that, brought teams. We kind of shared, all right, here's the playbook we've been running uh, here at HCPN here in Houston, if it's helpful for you to do in your own city. So that's been exciting, and we're, we're planning to do that again in the fall, and uh, our board with HCPN. CPN has really kind of been part of the, I think, uh, that we've been hit with is, hey, God's doing something here. We feel a sense of responsibility to kind of share what we've learned. And that's kind of just an offering to other cities. And it feels like the Spirit's striking a match as far as city collaboration, church planting, where it's bubbling up now in other cities, and we just have to be a, a little further down the road. Yeah, that's what I say. We're in the middle of a series about uh, renewal and yeah. awakening, even looking back at, uh, you know, throughout history, some of those great movements mm-hmm. of the Spirit. I, I guess, can you speak at all to, as you look back over the court, you know, you say, you know, Clear Creek number one, and now all these different churches and what you've seen, can you paint a little bit of a picture of how you've seen God at work through uh, your the efforts of HCPN and just those networks? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, probably a lot. I'm trying to think of a good story to tell. I think one of my favorite, we do, one of the things we do with HCPN is we do regular monthly gatherings. Um, And so that's like exciting. You get together with people across the city. You hear a speaker, share a meal, network with each other, gives a Mm -hmm. chance to cast the vision, pray for the city. Well, last, it's probably been about a year ago, we actually had our hundredth gathering. So from that December 9th or December 2009 being our first gathering, we've done that now a hundred times. And at our hundredth, we had different people plants that had kind of started or went through a residency, send in pictures and images of people that have come to know Jesus in the church plant. And we had this full picture of all these people, you know, getting baptized or faces of people that had come to know Jesus uh, in new church plants. So that's just something that kind of stands out. I don't think I'll, I'll forget, but it, just a lot of impact yeah. that's kind of over, um, over time, both with you know, out of those 130 churches, I think we figured really 80 of them are new churches that didn't exist in the last decade. Um, so those are brand new. Uh, the others are kind of partner churches that have come in and say, hey, we want to be a part of this. Uh, so it's fun to kind of see both things stirring with new plants, but then established churches kind of grabbing that uh, multiplication DNA. Yeah. How, how many church plants uh, do you guys estimate or how many churches do you estimate it's going to take to really see like some gospel saturation yeah. through the city of Houston? Yeah, great question. So missiologists, those that kind of study mission and really what does that look like, typically will say it'll take one church for a thousand people wow. really to see a city uh, saturated with the gospel. So Houston, we've run, we've actually run, ran data on this for Houston. So back in 2010, uh, I think our population was almost 6 million. Um, and we kind of looked at the data then, and it was there was one church for every 1,400 people. So we weren't even at, at back in 2010 there. And those, uh, those churches represent everything. Yeah. It may not be a church I would send someone to. Um, necessarily, all those churches are, hey, we're Jesus-centered, focused on the gospel. But that, that was the ratio right there. Ran the data again in about 20, 2020, last year, 2021. And now it's actually one church for every 1,500 people. So it's actually getting, the gap is getting larger here in Houston, even though I feel like, hey, we're making an effort to plant churches. And now we're looking at the Houston data, like, all right, right now there's, Houston's growing, Greater Houston is growing by 250 people every day. So it gives you an idea. I mean, 250 people is a good size. That's a church. church. Yeah, it's a church. (laughs) And that's every day. So we've started looking at, all right, what are the numbers that it's going to take really to not only maintain where we're at, but to even kind of help shrink that down. And it's it's a lot. It's hundreds of churches really every year that are being planted uh, with the hopes that, you know, a whole bunch aren't shutting down uh, either. So... We got work to do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah we do. Uh, just, I, I know Carl's probably sitting here thinking like, guys, uh, what about me? <laughs> but a little bit, while we're on that subject, you know, uh, what, what does it practically look like for lay people uh, that are part of Clear Creek 
that may want to plug in and engage. They may feel some stirring in their spirit about, man, what is this like Mm -hmm. starting a new church from scratch, planting a church, or maybe how do I, how can I resource or be a part of that? How can I join in on on the mission of some of what, what's going on in the greater Houston Well, let me, yeah, I'll talk a little about Houston. Maybe Carl can answer that for Global uh, here in a second, get him talking a little bit. He's itching to Did you say something? He's itching to jump in. Uh, You just check your email for a second. (laughs) So really, I'm uh, Go ahead, Chad. I'm right now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking. Um, so a couple ways. One, if you're feeling, if someone's listening to this and they're feeling the burden, like, hey, I may be a church planter, being mm. someone who's going to lead maybe a new church plant or someone on a church planting team. So a couple a couple things. One, we have a couple different residency programs. Those are just opportunities to train church planters. One of those is called our foundational residency. And that that's really for those that are kicking the tires mm-hmm. uh, for church planting. It's not like, or I'm not 100% sure, but feeling like, like maybe something stirring. So we meet once a month for that. Um, it's usually the first Thursday of every month for about 10 months. So if anybody's interested in that, they can uh, check out hcpn.org and find more information about that or uh, hit me up via uh, email uh, as well, and I can give them more information. So that's for an individual. you know. And then we also, like right now, we have another residency called our finishing residency. And so we've got a group of planters in that that are just in the launch phase. So oh, yeah. they're developing launch teams, uh, getting ready in their area. And so some people may feel like, all right, I'm going to go help one of these church planters for a season. And maybe it's like, all right, I'm going to give a year and help this church plant get off the ground. Um, or maybe it's like, I'm going to go volunteer for a Sunday. And maybe, because you know, new church plants, that's what they don't have, yeah. is a lot of volunteers at the beginning. So maybe it's someone, hey, I can go do children's ministry in this church plant uh, for a season, yeah. you know, and maybe help that way. Maybe it's taking your small group to do some sort of evangelism or outreach initiative to kind of help a local church, uh, things like that. So there are opportunities to to plug in, especially if you feel a little bit of an itch to get involved in church planning. Nice. So that's kind of our uh, Judea, Samaria. Yeah. How about when it comes to the ends of the earth, a little bit further? What, what, what is that looking like these days? Where, where, where are our eyes fixed? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Thank you. <clears throat> now, insofar as like where Clear Creek is now, um, you know, we've had a longstanding relationship uh, with our partners in Cuba mm-hmm. uh, in Honduras. Uh, probably five years ago, we uh, started in uh, five or six years ago, started a partnership in Brazil. And just before COVID, we were going to Africa, Eastern Africa, Mozambique uh, specifically, to start a work there, got shut down during COVID and just re-engaged in this last year to get that going. And then, uh, you, you know, Chad has just been key for me. He's just a good thinker about uh, all things church planning and global. And so I'm grateful just for the influence he's had uh, on me uh, and in my leadership relative to uh, what I do globally. But just he, he's just a good thinker about all of this. And so we have we had a season where we were thinking through, along with Bruce, because Bruce wants to be involved with this, about where, where would we go next? And so where, where could we go? What would, where would God have us go and start this? Uh, next place. And so just through prayer, we uh, really started thinking through what would it be like for us to partner with somebody in Europe? You know, Europe is uh, just as a whole uh, at a place now where there's a uh, majority of Europe is less 1% or less than 1% of evangelical presence. And so uh, we had the opportunity to go to Europe last year and talk to a bunch of partners that are uh, engaged with Acts 29 Global and landed with uh, some guys that are starting on the front end of doing some great work in Spain. And so that's where we're headed next. That's going to be our our next partnership, and we'll go back there in uh, May to meet with those guys and uh, get the next step going. Yeah. What, talk about some of the unique challenges that come with planting churches globally. I mean, some might say like, oh man, we, we, we've got a strategy here. We've got systems. We've got processes. We can put procedures together. Why not just go do what we're doing here everywhere else and give them the playbook and let them run the plays? Yeah. yeah, probably the same reason we wouldn't think that we could just go do Clear Creek Community Church everywhere in Houston and every nook and cranny. Uh, context matters. Yeah. You know, context matters. And you, not you, one, or our belief is that we need to get uh, we need to find the right person that we can come along and partner with and support them, you know, because we might not know the best ways to to reach the, the people of Mozambique. We don't. 
I mean, you can't just go and plant Clear Creek Community Church there because a lot of things won't translate. But what we can do best is come alongside people that are there, find the, the, the right man and woman that are, are looking and given to their community and to planning of churches and come alongside them and, and resource them. Because one thing that we can do uh, relative to Clear Creek Community Church is God's blessed this church with a, you know, an abundance of resources in a number of different ways. And so we can certainly support people that way. But it's, it's really, Ted, about us going into these areas and finding out how do we serve you? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, but you know, first we find the right. Who's the person? Who's the person? Where do we? You know, we're praying, God, where do you want us to be? And then we're looking, and we're going into that area, and we're 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 investigating and talking and learning. And then, you know, you've heard me use the language before. Then we just want to hitch our wagon onto where God and His Spirit is already moving, and see how do we support. Yeah, talk a little about. I know you guys, but because you guys both give some o- oversight or collaboration in our global efforts, and I know kind of behind the scenes some of this. I want to try and help give people a glimpse of a little bit behind the picture of you know it's it's not always clear and just how and it's not even always about speed, like how long things take, and really the. What goes into, you know, I, I don't want to give the answer of like, you know, the, obviously some, maybe some prayer and discernment, but talk a little bit about, uh, it's not always just like, oh, yep, I see it, got it, yeah, let's just go do that. It's like kind of a slow process. And even uh, some of our efforts, it's not, the, the fruit isn't always the mm-hmm. same that you see in place to place. You know, you can, the wind is a, di- the winds are different in different right. contexts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe give a little bit of, of context to yeah. what that looks like behind the scenes as you're thinking about Spain and moving forward and what you guys are praying about and thinking through and I don't know. Yeah, good. Good. Chad, go ahead, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I think one I know of the, you're waiting to talk again. No, no, I'm <laughs> itching, man. Yeah. No, one of the, I think one of the neat things when you go back to that Acts 1 8, like at the time of the disciples, when they were given that, it wasn't like, all right, let's do this all at the same time. It was like they had one way to go about it. It was geographic. It was here, spend some time in Jerusalem, then this, then that. And now just in the world we live in, like we have the opportunity. You can touch all three of those. You can touch the end of the earth mm. right now. Um, you know, by communication, by jumping on a plane that just didn't, you know, didn't exist 2,000 years ago. So I think that's where we do have an advantage where, you know, we can go a little, obviously a little faster than the disciples went. Um, But like you said, there's still definitely a discernment process because you're looking for those right leaders. And I think over the years, one of the discoveries for me has been, all right, you're looking for people that are already doing it. And they're not waiting for Clear Creek to show up and like be the savior, you know, mm-hmm. the, the church from the United States that's going to help us. So I think what we've done, we found those right people that whether Clear Creek's involved or not, they're going to keep the mission going forward. And I think what we've been able to do is kind of help pour, you know, resources, whether that's people, uh, dollars to help it maybe even go faster and spread faster and engage, you know, a, a lot of people. So that's something I, I think of. I don't know what comes to mind for you. Yeah. But. I think, you know, you look at... Two polar opposites, if you will, for speed. So we think of Cuba. You know, they have a, a great opportunity in Cuba to, to plant churches. To, you know, they're, the people there have a, a hunger for the gospel. A lot of people in Cuba have been under the, the oppression of the government. And so they see that they have great freedom in Christ. And over the years that we've been engaged here, we've seen a great receptivity to the gospel. Well, we look at the other side, which now is Spain, and, you know, our, our guys with Acts 29 in Spain that we're going to be working with, you know, we were talking to them last year and they're like, yeah, we're leading the effort here. We're, we're the leaders of Acts 29 Spain. We're talking, hey, great. You know, how many churches are a part of it now? One, <laughs> us. Yeah. You know, but these guys have a mind about them that they're going to go. And they're going to do this with or without us. Mm-hmm. So you, you, have the, you have the two extremes there. One, that they're planning churches, they're planning house churches in Cuba. It's moving pretty rapid. And over here, it's like, look, this is going to be slower. But these guys are already working on a model where they have a, they're training church planters. And they have the vision of, look, the answer is to have churches planted all throughout here. And so it's like, okay, we're going to get on this. It's going to move slower. That's okay. We know that this is a long game. And yeah. ultimately, that we believe that's going to work best for reaching Spain and then the rest of Europe. Yeah. So we we, we said before in in previous podcasts, it's something we say now and then that you know uh, we do church plant, we do missions that result in mm-hmm. church planting because mm-hmm. we believe Jesus Christ is the hope of the world, and the local church yeah. is the redemptive agent uh, with which He's going to redeem people yeah. to Himself. Can can we unpack that a little bit? Just maybe give some. 
your own thoughts as to sure. uh, breaking that down for people. That's like, oh, that sounds like a bunch of churchy words. Yeah. And what, what does that actually mean? I think an easy way for me to explain that to people or even help people look at it. It's, it's you know, if you were to wind the clock back to uh, 1993 when Clear Creek first came here, there wasn't even a part of this community right before then. I'm not necessarily going to say that there wasn't anything going on to serve the people of this area. But if you look at what we're doing now in this area, in the name of Jesus, and for the fame of Jesus, if you will, think about that. Yeah. Think about that. That's the work of the local church doing what the local church does. You know, look at what we do. We just came off of our, our uh, first gifts to Jesus and talked about what our people in need ministry does, how they serve the impoverished and the poor. Think about all the small groups that go all over this community serving. Had it not been for Clear Creek Community Church, God, in his sovereignty and in his grace, planning and blessing this church and leading Bruce and Mark and, and the team to come and do this, it may be a different story. And so that's a clear picture of what the local church can do globally. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's a long game. We're 30 years into this at Clear Creek Community Church. So how do we help go and plant churches that will gather people to hear the gospel and scatter to go and share the gospel. Yeah. That's what I think about it. No, that's great. Yeah. I don't really have anything to add. That was really well. Good so, topic, Chad. Yeah. Topic. Yeah. Say, go, let, let's go for it. For you. No, that's good. So, um, well, the Bible says. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, often people, uh, there, there, there's quite a few people who have either grown up at church, have, have done missions before, you know, oh man, you know, it's a really impactful thing. Speak to a little bit like either trips maybe you've been on or stories that you've heard about just the, the impact of having your feet on foreign soil, being a part of that. What, what are some of the stories that come to mind either for you personally or ones that you guys know about? Yeah, I could, I, like, I could talk nonstop about that. Chad. Yeah, go let's ahead, go. Please. I want to hear. No, it. I mean, yeah, I mean, as I look at kind of this, like you look back at your spiritual markers in your life. I mean, there's probably several that I've had that I go back to being on foreign soil, and whether it's God speaking something to me about my life there, or or seeing you know what how the church is just fulfilling the mission God's a give, God has given them in that context, it's just inspiring. And, you know, we think of in the, here in the States, in the West, we, you know, we have all these resources, different things. And here, a lot of the places we work don't have all that, but just the, the deep commitment to follow Jesus uh, as a whole. And sometimes just the intentionality that they go about that has just been inspiring. So, I mean, you know, specifically, I think one of the things I continue to tell the story is one of our partners in Cuba, you know, when anytime we go down there, like I'll take church planners down there, we'll take our church planning residents, kind of expose them because you don't see really a movement like that here in the West. So you want to expose them to different, different church planning stuff. So one of our partners, anytime you're with them, uh, really all of our partners, they're bringing out maps. And that's kind of where we've adapt, uh, adopted the axiom, missional people have maps, because they're really thinking strategic. And uh, sure enough, they'll bring out, if we're in a certain area, they'll bring out the map, put it on the table and talk about their city, you know, how they're reaching their city. Then they have a map of their province, you know, all right, here are the different towns throughout our province. This is what it looks like. And then one of our partners, has this huge map of Cuba that's probably been folded and unfolded a thousand times, all taped together, longer than this table. He'll stretch out and say, you know, he'll stretch it out and go, here are the 15 provinces in Cuba. Here's the ministry that's happening in each of these. And wow. so when, when, when our partners look at that from the States, they're like, I need to think like that, which mm -hmm. is inspiring. And just how that even kind of flows down to the people. I'll never forget driving across the country and we pull into this one town. I'm like, where, where, you know, what are we doing? He goes, oh, I got a church planner here. Uh, we pull in, go to his house, <clears throat> small, small little house. Uh, he takes us back to his bedroom, uh, only other room in his house. And above their bed, what do they have? He, he goes to the bed, uh, top, uh, really the headboard area, pulls it off, puts it on the bed, and it's a map. It's a map of their neighborhood. And he proceeds to go really uh, house by house and tell, uh, tells us about the impact that the, that the church is having, just you know what's going on, gospel conversations, really every single house he's telling us. And I, I mean, I'm just floored by seeing that. And I'm driving away with uh, our partner. I'm like, all right, tell me the deal there. What's going on? And he said, well, uh, Cuba, uh, Castro had a saying when he came into the country that revolution happens block by block. And really the church in Cuba has adopted that, that if we're going to see a Jesus revolution, we got to take the gospel block by block. Yeah. And that's what I saw there. And I, I'll never forget that image uh, as long as I live. That's powerful. Yeah. How about for you, Carl? 
I think along the same lines that Chad's talking about, missionaries have maps. You've probably heard Bruce say uh, time and time again that religious people have rules to keep missionaries, have stories to tell. And I can't think of a single person that I know of here that has gone on foreign soil that doesn't come home with a story. Yeah. You know, if I even if I think through uh, our partners right now in... You know, we were in Honduras with Byron last year working with guys about starting a, a church planning movement uh, across the country of Honduras. And who are the guys that will come to the table to do that? It's, it's, it's this energizing thing to know that, that God would allow you to be a part of something like that. And then we, you know, we're in Cuba and, you know, person after person who's been there trip after trip to, has talked about going to do door-to-door evangelism. And, you know, when you think about that or you hear that, you're like, well, that's ludicrous. You know, that's a, that's a good way to get shot in Texas. But we've got people that are going there, and you open up your door, people open up their doors to, to Americans in Cuba, and the first thing in their mind is, everybody's trying to get to your country. What are you doing here? Yeah. And you have people just, you know, sharing the hope that we have in Jesus, and then watching people respond to the gospel. It's, it's an incredible thing. You know, I think about our recent trip down in Brazil and, and being back on, on a native, uh, native uh, Brazilian lands where their, their Indians were and having a lady there that was into her 70s and asking her, hey, how long have you lived in this area? You know, and she says, some 67 years. And I asked her, well, how many people like this missionary have been back here to tell you about Jesus? He's the first. I mean, to see that. Yeah. To, you know, to, to have them invite us into their, into their homes with dirt floors to pray over the people in their family. I mean, it, it's an incredible thing. I, I think about our recent trip to Africa when we're over there, and we'd been there uh, three years before, almost three years before. And we, we go to this gathering where there's hundreds of kids that are coming into there. And I'm talking to, the, to, to the, the pastor who leads this, and I'm like, man, tell me, what are some things that you're seeing that are happening? Where, where do you see God moving here? And he's like, Carl, we're, we're seeing now uh, these kids that come here. Now we're seeing girls that are no longer uh, becoming pregnant at 10 and 12 years old. Yeah. Ooh. And, you know, he's, he's telling us the stories of, of, how, of how they're learning that they have this identity in Christ and how they're made in the image of God. They're teaching them how they would say no to family members, how, how they can understand their true value. And I mean, being a part of that, hearing the stories, seeing the kids, it's, it's, it's something that'll just, just mark you. Going, going and doing conferences at all these, at all these uh, spots around the globe where, where, where people are hearing the gospel anew and fresh, you know, and, and wanting to be a part of church planning. I mean, those are stories. Yeah. Those are stories and you're a part of that. And there's a, there's, it's, it's a gift. It's a gift that God would use you and allow you to go and be a part of that. Yeah. So I, you know, one of the things that one of the goals is a, a thousand, uh, thousand people on foreign soil in the next five, five years. years. And so uh, give a little bit about like, what, why, why, how, how did you come to a thousand? Why a thousand? And maybe what, what, what do we anticipate or what are we hoping for uh, as a result of that? What are we hoping to see God kind of do? Yeah, it was, that number is like, you know, what number would we do that would be like a big number? What yeah. would be bigger? You know, I think we've had years where we may have sent 100 people on foreign soil, uh, but to to do double that every year, um, it's a big number for us. Yeah. And it, it's a number that requires us to to think bigger, to make more asks of people, and that's the space that I wanted us to be in, where we're doing this and because we know the impact it's going to have. We, we believe that missionaries have stories to tell. Yeah. I mean, we've got guys right now that just got back from Cuba, and they, were, they had an opportunity to WhatsApp me when they were there through one of, uh, one of the uh, church planters that's there. And they're just talking about how incredible it is. And the guys that, that are the church planters there are you know, telling me, Carl, God's doing great things through these people. So we see it time mm-hmm. and time again. It's, it's Priscilla Hartram who leads our, uh, our Brazil efforts now, you know, recounting the first time she went into a favela. Being from Brazil, you didn't go into the favela. Yeah. You didn't go into the slums. 
And she goes in and all of a sudden she says, now she's seeing Brazil with through a gospel lens. Yeah. And that's what God does. Yeah. I mean, God honors our obedience of going on foreign soil further than we could ever expect or even want. Oh yeah. It's like a fresh awakening yeah. or renewal. Yeah. I mean, I know for me coming back from Brazil and you know, I've had as I've had time to yeah. digest that, just the the impact of those missionaries that we met and their passion for reaching the lost people grew in my heart, oh, yeah. even back here at home, like thinking about my neighbors, friends, like just the lost people in, mm. in my life. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a whole different perspective because yeah. it's so easy to just not, not think about that or not li live as missionally and just worry about your own stuff that you got going on and, you know, your own junk, your own brokenness, yeah. but trying to be others focused and it, yeah, I yeah. mean, even little things like sure. that. That's you know, not little. I think that's great. Well, yeah. But I think having that's a lot of people whose heart grow mission, I mean, I think coming back, even if it's as little as something like that, it's going to be amazing to see what happens Impactful, here yeah. when people, yeah. when people come And I don't back. think that's little, Ted. I mean, really, I, and, and I know you're just being humble and yeah. want to be modest in that, but I think that's what God begins to do in us. Yeah. Where we, where we start seeing other people. We, we think of things, we look at things with this eternal perspective. It just changes our view, our outlook. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm excited about what God's doing uh, through Clear Creek and our efforts here. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts of wisdom or closing thoughts? Anything you would uh, say to challenge somebody who's maybe stirred by this? Yeah, I, I would say first, pray. And you can pray for our partners. Pray for our partners in Africa and Spain and in Cuba and Honduras and Brazil. I can tell you that's the first thing all of those people tell me. Hey, remember to pray for us. Ask your church to pray for us. Yeah. And I would say when you're praying, be bold and, and ask God to lead you. Ask God to lead you. God, do you, where is it you would have me go? And then do it. Then go somewhere. And then I would say, be generous. Continue to be generous financially. You know, uh, many people give uh, regularly and sacrificially. And I would look, those are the things that give us the opportunity to continue to do what we're doing. Yeah. I want people to do that. But I want people to do that with the understanding that, that everything that we do is related to the mission of what we do. Yeah. Not only of leading unchurched people to become fully devoted followers of Christ here, but really getting people on foreign soil. When they come back, that mission takes a greater and deeper meaning inside of them. Yeah. I love it. We're on the same page because the, the words that came to my mind, you know, next step is like pray, give, go to, yeah. to kind of summarize it, you know. Be praying, praying for our partners, uh, praying for the church planting work. Really, if you trace church planting movements around the world, the number one characteristic is always, you know, times of uh, committed prayer, unified prayer, fasting. Uh, so we want that. We're doing an initiative coming up in Houston through HCPN called Awaken Houston. So it's a 30-day prayer initiative from January 30th to February 28th. You can go to awakenhouston.org if you want more information, you know, as we pray for Houston. And Shameless, plug. Here. Shameless, Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> In a good pray, way. And then give, and I'll just echo, you know, Carl's sentiments on that, what he said. I mean, the generosity of Clear Creek uh, has been... I mean, there's ripple effects around the globe because of the generosity of God's people yep. here at this church. So just... You know, I'll say thank you, but continue, you know, if, yeah. whether that's to our general fund or we have a special mission fund and that, you know, that just enables us to do more um, to us being Clear Creek, uh, more things around the world. And then go. You may be one of those thousand people in the next five years. Yeah. So you know, I want you to pray that way and see what, see what God's stirring. Yeah, uh, both globally and are there ways to engage here in our community and in Houston? And I know here coming up in a, in a couple months, we're going to have some opportunities for people to actually, you know, head out into the lobby and sign up yeah. and maybe take that next step. So hopefully this stirs uh, in some people so that once they hear it again uh, in a couple months, that they're, they're ready, ready to, 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 to go and do that. Well, thank you guys for yeah. being yeah. here. Really thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it, Ted. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't yet, make sure that you hit subscribe down below and check out clearcreekresources.org. We have videos, books, and sermons on there, as well as our audio podcast. Thanks for watching.